So on socialist news and views, we let folks introduce themselves. Do you both want to just tell listeners who you are about yourselves? Okay, um, I can go first. Uh, so I'm uh, Zoiria Lyric. I go by my last name, Lyric. Um, I'm originally from Bangladesh. Uh, right now, I'm uh, living in uh, USA. I'm a nuclear engineer here. Uh, in Bangladesh, I was a student of physics in the University of Dhaka, which is the uh, epicenter of the movement we're talking about today. Uh, not only this uh, recent movement, uh, it has been uh, the center of uh, most of the other uh, movements that happened in uh, Bangladesh. So after I graduated, I joined uh, Atomic Energy Commission in Bangladesh and worked as a scientist and then moved to United States for higher studies and uh, now I'm working. Uh, in a uh, fusion-based nuclear company, the same company Moment is working. Uh, yeah, so we work together. Uh, that's all about me. Thank you. Yeah, I'm Abdul Momen. Uh, I am uh, a radio chemist professionally. Uh, I uh, grew up in Bangladesh and studied at University of Dhaka and graduated from there the, as Lyric was mentioning the epicenter of many uh, movements, students' movement, and in Bangladesh, uh, the major political movement actually led by students since uh, 1952 to now. Uh, all the time, the students are the vanguard, are the front, front force for this all type of movements, and Dhaka University was and is the epicenter of those movements. In 2009, I moved to uh, United States and uh, I, I was studying here uh, and graduated and worked in the national labs for a few years. And now I'm working in a nuclear industry uh, here in United States. Yeah, I really appreciate you two joining me. Um, now recently, at least uh, in the news, uh, there's been huge protests that started with students, obviously. Uh, over a number of weeks. As you hinted at before, this has been going on for a long time. It didn't just start in the past few weeks, uh, but there's been a, a huge upsurge in uh, struggle in the past few weeks. Um, there was 300 deaths over a period of weeks. Um, and then Prime Minister uh, Sheikh Hasina resigned and fled the country. Um, you know, some media has called this a revolution. Can you talk about the, the protests, uh, you know, with the students, how they grew so large, why they grew so large so quickly? And it, you know, is this a revolution uh, that's taking place or took place in uh, in Bangladesh recently? Um, a moment can uh, go first. Uh, yeah. Later on, I'll add my... Uh... <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, like, so, as I mentioned in my introduction, the students are the major forces for Bangladeshi uh, movements so far, like, uh, throughout the history and now, and this recent uprising of the students uh, it started with a quota reform movement. So for the viewer, the perspective here, what it means by quota reform, uh, uh, after independence in 1971, there was a, like a quota for the government job for the freedom fighters. So obviously uh, it is <laughs> more than half a century ago, uh, right. but uh, the quota was there uh, and it, it doesn't, bother too much because the freedom fighters were well, not the age range that they can join the government service. And for the perspective, though, the government service is very uh, lucrative and uh, prestigious back home. And government is the number one employer, the biggest employer in the country. So it's, it's very important for the graduates there for to, to get a job in the, in the government sector. So what uh, Sheikh Hasina has done uh, in his uh, previous tenure that he uh, amended the law to make sure that the uh, children of uh, the freedom fighter, the veterans, can join the job at, mm -hmm. within those quota. Mm -hmm. So that was a big change, right? That uh, now right. you have a larger pool that right. can apply for that job. And then uh, this time, when uh, in 2018, there was a big movement because at that time, he, she uh, amended it again, make sure that the grandchildren can join mm. into the same quota. So doing all those is actually making a 
uh, the, the, the thinking was that, okay, all the supporters or the quarterly people going to be right. within the government job. And this is like actually very frustrating for the students. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a 170 million people like in a, in a place like Iowa, right. as small as it is, like half of the U.S. people. And 24 percent each, 28 percent is young. And a lot mm -hmm. of graduates, they don't have job. Like So the government job is the one that, especially the university students, are looking for those jobs. And these quotas so, were like, it was like something like 50 percent, or wasn't it, of the government? Total 56 percent go to yeah. these uh, freedom fighters, their children, their grandchildren. So that's a huge percentage of those government jobs. Okay, For yeah. them, thirty percent, like, and then the other quotas, like the other okay, sure. people, actually had uh, no uh, objections from the very beginning, like for mm -hmm. the women, for the. Uh, people who are like less uh, privileged, uh, mm -hmm. those kind of quotas, and and the areas that are underdeveloped, mm -hmm. so people never complained for those quotas, right. but the quota that is big chunk, like thirty right. percent for the. <laughs> For the grandchildren of the uh, uh, veterans, that mm -hmm. that was the major thing. And and Sheikh Hasina, like the way she ruled the country, like is very um, single person decision maker, like like a fascist sort of thing. Mm. Like whatever she said, like she she will do it. Like uh, she was been in the power for a long time. So there was a movement in 2018 with the same thing. Uh, and that time, uh, government backed down. So what she did, she just scrapped everything. There was no quota. It's like very emotional reaction. Mm. Like she, she scrapped like the student, like the women quota, like all the uh, small uh, uh, tribal people quotas, all those things she right. cut off that time. She, she backed off. And uh, this time in a court, like, in June, end of June, the court decided like some, some of those grandchildren and the children of veterans, they uh, filed a case and then the court, high court was like reversed the decision that it was mm. illegal to scrap. Um, gotcha. By law, it should be illegal because in constitution, it says that you need to maintain some quota for the women, for the, uh, uh, for the uh, less privileged people or the area, right? Mm -hmm. Because she has done it emotionally. Right. And this time when it's like take, uh, the, the decision was reversed, that was a very bad for the students. And they, they were on the street protesting again. So one important thing we need to remember the, the generation currently, uh, who are the uh, students uh, in various universities and colleges, they were in the movement in 2018 for a safe safe road movement, mm. right? So they were the school students uh, in 2018, like exact this time period, like July, August in 2018. And that time also government unleashed his student, had a student wing mm. and uh, beaten, beaten these school children so right. hard with, with uh, sticks with uh, all sorts of things and uh, very that violent was, yeah that was their memory like now they are mm -hmm. graduates they are students at the universities and again yep. they see that the government unleashed their student wings and 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 their uh, other forces and they actually revolted really uh, very strongly across the country Mm -hmm. that, that's how that's how I see this is student movements. And then at the end of this student movements, like when they actually uh, coming out from every corner of the country and the government tried to like uh, suppress it. So there was a lot of death, uh, like casualties. And it was like fueled, especially uh, Abu Said in, in Rangpur, uh, Northern District where he was uh, killed uh, and it was uh, filmed. Uh, mm. So it went viral across the country. Right. So that's, that's fueled uh, among the students and resonated so uh, heavily that the students came out. And then finally, you, you, you know that episodes like how it unfolded, the students were like joined by other people like the common people and it became so big that the government mm. couldn't handle it. So 
and she was forced to uh, fled the country. So, Eric. Yeah, um, to add uh, some more information, so uh, it's like uh, Nikki said, it's 30, uh, 300 people uh, were killed over the uh, period of a uh, few weeks. Uh, but uh, from many sources, we have heard uh, the actual number is even greater. Mm -hmm. uh, we have heard that uh, the records were wiped out from the death registers. Right. So the actual number is not known, but it can be much more, many more than that, uh, 300. And also how this, uh, uh, how this movement grew so, uh, so much larger, Momen uh, uh, told you the reason. I also think uh, that it's, you know, the students. I mean, if it were the killing of other groups, maybe teachers, maybe uh, some other groups, uh, the people's sentiment won't get hurt mm. in this way, but the killings of students, I mean, if you see the, their age, I mean, right. how uh, young, how innocent they're, mm -hmm. and they they were fighting pro for a proper cause. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, after the liberation war uh, in 1972, after in 1971, uh, Bangladesh fought for its uh, liberation from Pakistan. And then in 1972, the then uh, prime minister, uh, or um, he's called Bang Bangabundu, when he said that, well, uh, we'll give this much quota for the freedom fighters, everybody agreed with that, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, they fought for our liberation, and right. uh, it, it's very valid. But then again, uh, at some point, uh, Sheikh Hasina, uh, she said, well, uh, we'll uh, give this quota to their children well there was some talking but still people were okay but then grandchildren it's like it's a pyramid I mean, <laughs> right, one right. person their sons and daughters and their grandchildren it, it's so big and uh for bangladesh i mean there is not much uh good opportunities for jobs so everybody uh, sees the government jobs as you know a very uh solid secure way of earning uh their uh, uh livinghood so mm -hmm. uh it's a, it's a very valid cause and uh you know from uh what moment said that in 2018 uh this these students they're uh, they're called gen z i mean this this movement is uh, uh it, it was called the first ever gen z led movement or revolution mm -hmm. so these people were in high schools then and they fought for the same quota and that quota was abolished. And then in 2024, I mean, it, it's uh, so much, I mean, it, it's unreasonable why the government, why the uh, previous government, why Sheikh Hasina would be so adamant to, you know, to um, uh, regain the, or uh, reestablish this quota. It, it, it seemed like, well, uh, there are some pitfalls. I mean, uh, not everybody, it, it needs some certificate and there are many ways to get this certificate, this certificate, of, well, uh, I'm a freedom fi fighter. These are my grandchildren, you know. So uh, for uh, many of us, it was, uh, um, I mean, uh, it was deemed as a way to put their own people mm. uh, into the, into uh, government services, into everywhere. Right. So they can remain in power for a even longer time. So, yeah, this is a valid cause. And this is the killing of many young, innocent children. And it hurt the sentiment all over the uh, Bangladeshi people. And uh, later on, not only the students, their their, their parents, their, their teachers, uh, every people from, you know, every uh, walk of uh, life, the rickshaw pullers, uh, the bus drivers, everyone, they agreed with that and they came to the streets. So this way it, uh, grew so large and also uh, Gen Z, I mean, they were, they were, uh, um, they were taken as well. They, uh, they're so much uh, addicted to social media, but they <laughs> use this social media right. to, uh, to uh, uh, how to say, the, they use this social media to show the people, well, these things are happening. This right. brutality is happening. Please talk for us. So, yeah. They're I mean, using I, it well. 
Yeah. <laughs> and is it a revolution? In many ways, it is. Mm -hmm. I mean, although uh, the former government was a, you know, it was a democracy, mm. but uh, it was it was a democracy only in name, only in the names. Mm. It was mostly an autocratic. It was mostly a tyranny. So, uh, I mean, uh, when the Kota movement it uh, got changed to the movement to uh, let the government uh, let the uh, previous government out of power and uh, to form a new government, uh, when we heard what the students had to say, we heard that they want a very new establishment mm -hmm. where the democracy would be regained. People will have their rights to vote properly, to uh, raise their concerns, to talk against the government if the government is not doing anything right. Right. So yes, it in many ways it, it we can call it a revolution. It a revolution to regain the democracy. Mm -hmm. Well, and, I appreciate. No, go ahead. Uh, yeah. I yeah, was just gonna uh, say I appreciate that, and I think you know that kind of gets me to the to the next question when you're talking about this new government that they're uh, putting in, and you know I know that Mohammed Yunus uh, has now taken over as interim leader of Bangladesh, and I believe I, I thought it was great. You know, I, this was a demand that the leaders of the student movement. They said, you know, this is the this is who needs to be like taking over this interim government, um, you know, to move forward. Um, can you talk about why they wanted uh, Muhammad Yunus to lead and what you think we can see uh, from this uh, government? What what will we um, what are we seeing and what will we what do you think we will see from this uh, government led by uh, interim leader uh, Yunus? Yeah, Dr. Yunus is uh, highly regarded by the educated people, uh, and he is very known, uh, especially uh, after receiving the Nobel Prize as a, as a first uh, Bangladeshi. Uh, it's a big, uh, big thing, like, for the educated people there. So they know him, and they are very uh, respectful to him, especially educated faction of of the people, and uh, he is mainly known for his uh, micro lending, uh, the the Grameen Bank. He, he is the chief of that uh, effort. He started it, and he is uh, very uh, internationally like highly uh, connected. Uh, people know about him, and and the recognized is recognized. So the students who are uh, in the movement, uh, they know of him, uh, the name and everything. And why they pick, picked him, like, I guess, if we look at, look back the, the history a little bit, like fa very quickly back home, like how the politics in Bangladesh unfolded since 1971. So right after revolution, uh, Sheikh Mujib was the leader uh, of the liberation war, and he was in uh, power uh, up to 75. And then, like many other uh, countries uh, in, in South Asia and in Asia, especially the, the military coup and in like the Latin America too, uh, 1975, he was killed with all his family member almost except Sheikh Hasina and another hard sister, they were outside. So they, the, the family inside, they were killed in 1975. And then the military rule was there till uh, 1990. So that was the military rule uh, mm -hmm. back, back in Bangladesh. And 1990, again, there was a big student-led movement to uh, overthrow the dictatorship, military dictatorship. And then that's the time there was a consensus among the political party that the interim government will uh, uh, set the election for, for the political party. So that's when the first interim government concept back home established in 1990. And then from 1990 to uh, now, like 2024, so it's a kind of like a democratic uh, civilian rule uh, continuation. So each time, whenever the five-year tenure completed, the the other parties who is who was not or is not in the power, they were like claiming that the fair election was not possible by the 
ruling government. Mm. So there was no trust that the ruling government can conduct a fair election because the government, uh, the institutions are not strong enough to conduct a fair election. Mm -hmm. So in 1996, uh, there was a movement, it's called like a caretaker government movement. So that, that caretaker government movement was established. And then uh, 1996, the caretaker government was there. And then 2001, the caretaker government was there. Mm. And then again, 2006, the caretaker government, uh, the government was not agreeing to put place the caretaker government mm. again. So there was a movement again, and there was a civil and military coup at that time, if you say, or you can say that uh, that uh, interim government that time too. So that is the first time when we heard about Muhammad Imnus, uh, Imnus's interest of politics. So at that time, he uh, formed a political organization and tried to uh, garner his support and to be a face in the politics of that like 2007, 2008 time period. So that's when he, he tried to be the leader of, of the civil society, NGOs, and all those things, bring together and, and lead the country. But she did not succeed. And, and later on, she recognized that that was a mistake. He is not a politician, so mm. he cannot do it, something like that. Right. And then this time again, when the situation, like, so Sheikh Hasina was democratically elected in 2008, nine period. And then the consecutive, like successive elections after that, none of them was democratic. Like mm -hmm. she just, uh, it's, it's a farce. Mm -hmm. She just did the election. It's, it's just the name of election, but there was no election. Right. India was like supporting that government because of the uh, political reason, obviously, because it's an India allied government. So it was easy for her to keep continuing that way. So it's right. like she became a fascist dictator and uh, did whatever she wanted to do, wanted right. to do, like she like disappeared people, killed people, like who is like uh, saying anything against her or critiquing right. her. She could not tolerate anything. Right. Like that. So the people were across the country were frustrated with this. So now in these situations, so as I mentioned that the the, the leadership here, like the students and the civil society in this uh, quarter of the population, Dr. Yunus is uh, a known name and respected person. So that's why I guess they, they mentioned about him to be the leader of uh, this interim period. So. Mm -hmm. Lyric? Did you have uh, anything to add to that? No, I think uh, the two reasons I can think of uh, moment said that one thing is, well, uh, uh, just to add, uh, not only the students, uh, I have seen a poll I mean, when the, uh, you know, a few weeks ago when uh, Hasina was still in power, but there is, um, you know, the movement going on and people were talking about, well, we need we need a new government, we need somebody. I mean, this is the time. So I have seen a poll from, you know, from uh, just general people. And I have seen uh, many uh, names for uh, Muhammad Yunus. I mean, many said uh, maybe Dr. Yunus is the right choice. Uh, so yes, I mean, um, uh, what Moment said, uh, one thing is uh, that he has international reputation. I mean, uh, Dr. Yunus, he, um, did his PhD uh, from Vanderbilt University here, and then he led the uh, micro creative movement in uh, Bangladesh and uh, had so many success. Uh, he was a Nobel laureate. Uh, he uh, he's a he's a really you know personable uh, person, and uh, you know he's a, he can be a leader. I mean, he expressed his interest to join politics at some point, but it was like uh, overturned or thrown down mm. by several of the politicians, not only Sheikh Hasina. I know some by some other politicians. I mean, there was a there was a talk that if a new person uh, express expresses in, uh, their interest to join politics now, they'll be seen as enemy of the states. Mm. 
that was the talk uh, right. at that time. And uh, I know that in uh, February 2017, Dr. Yunus, he proposed this idea, proposed uh, that idea of the political party through a newspaper in Bangladesh. But after seeing so many uh, antagonistic, uh, not from people, but by some other uh, established politicians, mm -hmm. uh, he actually, he said in May, uh, just within some months, he said, well, uh, maybe this is not the right moment. Uh, I'm not the right person. Right. So, uh, yeah, the student picked him because he's not connected to either of the two major political parties in uh, Bangladesh. Mm -hmm. uh, Moment said already, we've seen that from this two, not only uh, Sheikh Hasina's Aomi League, there is another uh, greater uh, political party that's uh, Bangladesh Nationalist Party or BNP. And uh, Khaled Azia is the uh, uh, leader of that party. During the uh, government for some time, and we have seen from these two parties, Aomi League and BNP, it was uh, accused with huge corruption and also, uh, I would say, yes, our Malik was uh, more uh, accused with being a tyrant. Sheikh Hasina was more accused of being a tyrant. But in uh, Khaled Aziz's uh, regime, too, uh, it was, uh, you know, there was, there was so many corruption. There was so many, such type of right. what Hasina did. There was such type of happening. So, yeah, I think uh, since Dr. Yunus was not connected uh, with both of this, not connected to both of these parties, he was a... Uh, good choice he has international reputation and then the other thing is uh, what the students wanted to do is to not select anyone by mistake mm. who has allies or who is even you know even in even in secret even secretly mm. is a friend of Asina's army league I mean, it, it, it's so difficult because they were in power for 15 years and they, they put their own people in every sector. So it, it's very tough for to pick someone who is not their friend. And we know that Sheikh Hasina and Dr. Yunus were not in good terms for uh, many reasons. So, uh, yeah, I think these two causes uh, led them to choose Mohamed Yunus. And uh, I see that a lot of people uh, in Bangladesh agrees, agree with this uh, selection. Well, I really appreciate you guys speaking with me. I, um, you know, I think this is important to get this information out there. Um, you know, is there anything else that either of you want to share before you go either about the, you know, the situation, of the students or about the, um, you know, moving forward, what can we can expect from the uh, uh, interim government or from the students moving forward? Yeah, the just a little bit of like status, like right after uh, Sheikh Hasina fled the country, uh, the lawlessness for a couple of days because there mm. was no government right and then the cops were absent because they were like uh, the protesters were like against them so they right. just vandalized but, everything yeah. and there was a lot of burning uh, and the party sheikh hasina's party and their leaders were like uh, targeted and uh, their homes, business, and everything were like uh, burned down and uh, many places. And unfortunately, some of those uh, things, the way it happened, because uh, the, the Hindu community in Bangladesh, like almost 10%, 9 to 10%. Mm -hmm. And these people are historically tied with Awami League, Sheikh Hasina's government. And in this time, like they were also targeted to some extent. And uh, because of like both, one is their like uh, minority and then other is they were like to some extent connected with uh, former uh, political regime. And right. that was very unfortunate. A lot of right. uh, that minor community were uh, affected. And people uh, actually try to came together and uh, make sure that everything becomes normal. And there were like lawlessness like uh, across the country. And uh, yeah, so those are the thing that the current government is uh, facing the challenge. And also there is a nice experiment going on. So I guess uh, the viewer would be uh, intriguing to see that like two of the student leaders now uh, the advisor, like in the interim government. So they are the part of the interim government. So nice. 
they are like uh, very young and they are the part of the interim government and uh, there is a discussion kind of going on like in every sector they will be um, uh, appointing the students who led the movement uh, to the ministries to make sure that they are represented uh, in the country so those are the, those are obviously an uh, an experiment and uh, right young young leadership and and it's a, it's an uncharted territory like how these right. things are going to be unfolding and uh, there are like various like the small country there are like various political uh, uh, outside political influence and interest right those lobbies how they actually interact with this uh, initiative that all like we have like Chinese influence, Indian influence, and then Western influence, and all those things together in this uncharted territory. Uh, so it's, it's a big, uh, big thing. We, we we are looking forward how these things are evolving. So everybody should keep their eyes on the situation and keep following what's going on. Did yeah. you have anything to add, Lyric? Well, uh, the similar things, uh, uh, Nick, uh, in a prior question, uh, you wanted to know, is this movement uh, is really a revolution? And I said, in many ways, it is. Uh, uh, the st students are successful in overthrowing uh, the fascist government. Uh, and there is a new uh, interim government uh, in place there. Uh, but we have to let the situations roll. We have to uh, uh, let this pan out to see right. Uh, how successful the new government is, uh, because the, we'll uh, consider the output of this as a success of this movement to call it a proper revolution, right? So uh, we want to see the interim government, they won't repeat any of the mistakes of the prior government. They will uh, lead the country to a fruitful situation where everybody can uh, exercise their democratic, right, democratic rights to uh, select uh, the actual government later. And uh, we see that in uh, the current interim government, there is a good representation of people from uh, all the circles of life. I see many women leaders in there. That's very promising. Uh, we'll um, expect that they will uh, work for the progress and they'll uh, keep the you know progressive mentality. And then uh, one of the policy that's very important to Bangladesh is uh, Bangladesh's uh, friends to everyone. Uh, it has friendship with every country, um, with every policy. So we want to see that. I mean, uh, it's not biased to uh, one part or one policy. It has uh, that. Uh, it keeps ally with everyone. Right. And um, also the you know the uh, people from every you know the uh, uh, people from uh, other religions. Not only it, it's a Muslim uh, major country, but people from Hindus, people who are Hindus. Uh, Christians and Buddhist people who were uh, were uh, in the tribes, like tribal people, everyone feel feel safe uh, when uh, this interim government in power, and later on uh, uh, in the regime of new government too. So we have to keep eyes, really. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I appreciate it, guys. Yeah, thank you. Nice to talk to you in your podcast, Nick. Thank you for having us, Nick. <laughs>